on this episode of Function Beast, we delete my motor. <laughs> Here, the uh, motor for the car is partially disassembled. Uh, took out the intercooler and the radiator and stuff because it blew a head gasket last time it was out at the track because it overheated super bad. We were up till 1.30 in the morning, uh, taking the intake manifold off in a Walmart parking lot because it uh, blew all the heater lines out and the car overheated super bad. And uh, when it did that, it melted the factory head gasket that I put in it. So this time we're gonna put a Tomei multi-layer steel head gasket in it. And so the next thing that it breaks is gonna be a bit breaks. I don't wanna to lean too heavily on foreshadowing, but I'll let you guess what the next thing that broke was. On this episode of Function Beast, the RB25 is dead. So the RB in Princess Bubblegum is no longer. Uh, it exploded after the last event. It was a supposed to be a test in tune for us. Um, it was the first Ready Set Drift event. We were gonna go out. We were gonna have a good time. We weren't really gonna record anything. Um, and then we were going to do like the July event as like the first big like drift video. Um, but that's not didn't happen. Um, so what? Uh, uh, unfortunately. Uh, the motor died in the uh, the first two days of the event, and we're scrapping it. And instead, this year, what we're going to be bringing you is how to do a fucking five three swap for zero dollars. Um, because I don't have that much money. You know, we I spent a shitload of money on the car before the season started, um, and it didn't pan out. So we're going to do a LS swap in your S13 on the super 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 down low. In fact, uh, I was able to get a motor for free, uh, and also a motor for $500. Uh, the 4.8, um, I got a 4.8 for free. Uh, I got a 5.3 for $500, so it can be done. Uh, this was only within uh, about two weeks of looking for a motor, so it can happen. Um, you just gotta keep a, uh, a sharp eye on, on it, and uh, you know we'll take you along as uh, it progresses. This is where we are at so far. This is the uh, the new Johnny. This is a 5.3 liter LM7 is the technical designation. It is a 5.3 liter uh, variant of the LS1 that was used in like pickup trucks. This one came out of a, uh, a Yukon, I think. Let's see what it's, oh no, it was a Tahoe. Yep, uh, 156,000 miles on the clock out of a Tahoe. Uh, and uh, you know it has a standard truck intake manifold on it, which unfortunately won't fit under the hood. We uh, I pulled off um, you know the exhaust manifolds and stuff. We're gonna give it a refresh, put a whole new gasket kit in it. Uh, you know I got like a master gasket set, uh, new head gaskets, um, new valley pan gaskets, um, and you know the the, the whole the whole shebang. And uh, we will refresh the motor, and it should make a little under 300 horsepower. Uh, 300 pounds feet of torque, uh, and that will be the new jam. As you can see, I've taken the intake manifold off and the exhaust manifolds off, and uh, we're just going to time lapse it, uh, tearing the motor down. After you remove the intake manifold, you can then get access to the valley pan and start removing that. Remove the knock sensors as well, as the valley pan will not come off if they're still in place. Just, just took off the valley pan. Good news is the valley pan looked disgusting, but on the inside...
There's a, it looks awful on the inside, much, much better on the inside. Or uh, awful on the outside, much better on the inside. So that's about as good as that can go. Use compressed air to clean away the remnants of the garbage that you've already removed. This method ensures that you get a bunch of garbage down inside the valley where the cam lives and inside the cathedral port so that you have more work later. Next, remove the valve covers to expose the rockers. Rocker cover. Next, remove the rocker arms. It's very important that you keep those in order. I didn't, but you should. After the 156,000 miles that this motor has on it, the rocker has mated with the push rod, so it's important that they go back together in the same order that you took them out on. They didn't in this, which is probably bad. But there ain't no going back now. Next, you can remove the head bolts that secure the head to the block. Now you can begin to remove the head from the block. From the factory, the head bolts are torqued to yield and cannot be reused, so if you ever want your head to be reattached to the motor, you gotta buy new ones. Become briefly confused by this strange looking 8 cylinder V arrangement RV. Remove the head and hope the push rods don't fall out on the floor. Hello. It is day two. It is 95 degrees. We're stuck in my garage. <laughs> building a motor. Ev Evan is here. It's wonderful. He's brought, he's brought things. There's engine degreaser, and a sander, and a sander, and an LS1 new thick metal. Look at the, like I guess height comparison, size comparison, or you call it, of like the two panels. How retarded is that? It's literally like this bottom section is that, and then they just They were like, oh, we got a shitload of room. How do we make this obnoxious? It is true, though, that that, you know, does make a shit ton more torque, a, 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 a ton more torque than that one does. But the bottom line is we can't really fit them in our cars. Like, not really. You know, it's too, they're, it's just too tall. So if you're cutting the, the hood of the car, you better at least have a supercharger coming out of it. We don't. We're doing this. This is the zero dollar build that we all promised you that the internet has said is possible. And it's not, it's not zero, <clears throat> it's just lo lower. But the only reason it's possible at all is because, you know, we happen to have these things sitting around. So. Yeah, there's there's going to be a lot of like zero dollar items. Like this entire 4.8 motor. <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> that's one of those things where people are like, oh, you can do it super cheap if your dad owns a junkyard. You're like, what? What? Yeah, that's like the thing. But anyway, we're gonna do stuff now, and you're gonna get to watch it. That's kind of like the whole premise of this show. Yeah, that's the <laughs> point. <I think. laughs>
After the heads have been removed, you can begin cleaning the block. Start by scraping away the excess head gasket with a razor blade. Once that's done, you can begin sanding the block. It's important to use the appropriate grit sandpaper. 240 is your jam. And sand. And sand. Occasionally stop to hit it with some brake clean. It's good. And then sand, and sand, and sand, and sand. And continue sanding until you consider suicide. So a thing that you do, you know how RBs have like really shitty like um, oil drain issues? And how you have to run like an external drain? For an LS, you just drill a couple of holes in some plastic. In some pla so, plastic. So, so that's that's what I'm gonna do. Come with me on this magical adventure. All right. So you gotta do one in each side. They recommend they recommend half inch, but I only have a three inch bit, so that's what we're going for. The good news is, if I fuck this up, there's spares in the other motor. The deal is when you do this, you don't really want to give it the business because you will break the cup like this is plastic and brittle and has been heat cycled 15,000 times. Because this has 156,000 miles on it. So just like rest the weight of the drill on it and wait for the hole to happen. So Evan's been cleaning the motor in the background while I've been drilling holes and shit and probably fucking it up. So this is a comparison of uh, just so you can see. This is what it looked like previous. Oh, there's no light. This is the dark side of the motor. Which, um, this is not like exceptionally dirty or anything. This is just average, you know? Like this, just this, how they this look. is, it's 156,000 miles on this motor. And yeah, it's not like this is like, oh my God, what a tragedy. Like, no, this is like regular. <laughs> so, it's fine. And then this, is what it looked like the 2400 rolled out of the factory. That is a, that is brand new. Which is what you want. I mean, if you're regasketing this stuff, you, you might as well give it a good, like, what's the point of putting a gasket on this? You know, why even bother? So you might as well clean it up and uh, it'll give the gaskets, you know, the, the best chance to actually seal and uh, function correctly. So If you're going to do it, you might as well do it. Begin cleaning the seal for the valley pan. Snap some pics for Instagram. Hashtag LS Life. Hashtag LS Swap. Hashtag V Hate. Hashtag, uh, hashtag. More sanding. And scraping. And sanding. And brake clean. We bought a whole case. We used every drop. Next, you abandon your car in your driveway and you let it rot for six months. We stopped filming because we were trying to make uh, an event and it takes us approximately two to four times longer to actually do something when, when you film it because it's just me and Evan, or sometimes just me or just Evan. We have to set up the camera, do the thing, make sure it's good. If it's not good, do it again. So it takes a lot of time. We were trying to make a deadline, so we stopped filming. Basically, what you didn't get to see is us putting the heads back on the motor, putting a camshaft in it. I bought an LS2 cam, and uh, that's what's in the motor currently and uh, obviously what you're seeing. So what we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do, is uh, show you a breakdown of how much it actually costs to do an LS swap into an S13, because everybody promises that it costs no money, which the, is true, you can buy an engine for $200. I've seen them for sale, you can get a 5.3 for 200 bucks. Full wiring harness and, and shit, but that's, 
kind of a half truth on how much it costs because it costs a lot to actually fit the motor into the car. You can't use the truck intake manifold because it's far too tall for the hood. You, I mean, if you want to cut a hole in your hood, you can certainly do that. Um, or if you want to run some kind of fucking crazy cowled hood, but why would you do that? Um, so you have to use an LS1 intake manifold. There aren't many swap things available for retaining the truck accessories. Um, so it costs to swap to F-body accessories if you want to use something like a, a sicky swap kit, which we didn't do. Um, my car has truck accessories. We made our own water pumps because you can't use a truck water pump and an LS1 or car style intake manifold because the throttle body hits the uh, like the feeder for the, the water pump. Like it, it doesn't work. So we had to modify it and turn it into an F body one. Uh, Evan did the welding on that. So you either need to get an F body water pump, which is like $400 or have a TIG welder. Um, so there, there's stuff like that, which makes it less doable or less cheap. And I'm gonna walk you through that breakdown. Okay, real facts on how much it costs to do this LS swap into this S13. There's a couple of things that I did not pay for, um, which we had hanging around the shop or I got from Evan and Galen or whatever. Um, but I feel like it's important to do this because you know, you'll get videos where dudes are like, oh, low budget 5.3 swap or whatever, and their sponsors paid for everything. We don't have sponsors. My wife is my sponsor. <laughs> she uh, controls the bank account and what I can and cannot spend, so I'm going to tell you exactly how much I spent on this swap, and we're going to calculate it out. I'm going to do it on my phone. So, first things first. The motor, it is a 2004 uh, 5.3 out of a Tahoe? Tahoe. Uh, that's what it said on the side of the motor when I bought it from the man in Connecticut. <laughs> so I purchased this for $500. That's how much the motor cost. I bought a gasket kit for it, a refresh gasket kit. And that came with every single gasket in the motor, including head gaskets. That was 200 bucks. We're up to $700. Um, and I'm just looking at the car to refresh my memory. It's off out of shot on the lift. Um, so that was that. The next thing that I purchased, uh, transmission. I got it from uh, a guy that I know. His name is Dave Roberts. He runs Sinister Drift Team. Uh, it came out of his 350Z that he was parting out because he f***ing hated it. Um, so that was $300 picked up at Scranton, at Scranton, Pennsylvania. So that's $1,000 thus far. Uh, next, uh, this is the Whopper, uh, the thing that actually makes like these swaps kind of expensive. Collins Adaption Kit. <laughs> You cannot complete the swap with just the plate itself because there's a bunch of other shit that you need to make it fit in the car. I purchased every single thing from Collins uh, available for the swap kit except the clutch master cylinder because we had huge problems with the uh, 350Z clutch master because uh, the one that actually went in it, the one that worked was an LS swap one and it had a, um, the, like the pedal is horrifically stiff. Um, like you need to give it like literally a Chuck Norris kick for uh, like trying to even engage the clutch. Um, every gear is a clutch kick. <laughs> yeah, every gear is a clutch kick. It, it requires incredible strength um, and it's very important that you use a three quarter master. So I did not buy the ISR one because it is indeterminable whether you will get a five eighths or a three quarter and it makes a big ass difference, so I bought a sicky one instead uh, because that was guaranteed to be three quarters. It's what it said on the box, so that's what I bought. Um, yeah, so the stuff that I got from Collins is everything for the swap except for the Clutch Master. So that is the adapter plate. I bought a bell housing, 
the shifter kit and the headers. Uh, the headers that are come from Collins are actually uh, ISR high ground clearance headers, which are the ones that I wanted anyway. Um, so I figured it was like if I was buying them, I was just get it all at the same time. So that is what uh, that's what I got. The whole Collins. I basically went down the th and I got the uh, a clutch as well. Um, I went for the mild clutch, which is basically. A, uh, it's good for like, uh, I don't know, I think it said 580 pounds feet of torque. Basically what it is, is a uh, specialty adapter 350Z to LS um, clutch disc. Like the actual disc, it's a six puck clutch, but it has three small ones and three big ones um, to make it fit right. And then it uses a factory GM LS7 pressure plate. So that's that. From Collins, the total for that was two thousand eight hundred dollars. So we're up to thirty-eight hundred bucks. Uh, the next thing that I bought was the uh, that Siki um, Clutch Master. That was two hundred bucks. So we are four thousand dollars currently. Uh, I bought head bolts from Jegs because you can't reuse the uh, factory head bolts because they're torque to yield. So I bought head bolts. I wanted to use like ARP head studs, but we had like we had a kit sitting around, um, but it was for the wrong year LS in 2004. They switch them from having two shorty bolts uh, on the ends to all the same size bolt, and mine was a different one. So I had to purchase new uh, head studs. They were 100 bucks. I had to buy. Coil pack brackets, uh, mounting brackets for uh, the coil packs because you can't use, you can use the truck ones, but they're ugly as fuck. So um, that was 50 bucks. So 41.50. Uh, I had to buy new injectors. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I bought, a, we spend a lot of time on Amazon purchasing all this stuff. Um, the joke that we make about LS swaps is that um, everything is $80, um, and that's something that you'll notice if you're looking at all the shit on Amazon. Um, I spent 80 bucks on injectors. I spent 80 bucks on fuel rails. I spent, uh, there's another thing that cost 80 bucks. Um, I can't remember what it was. Um, it was $130. For the uh, accessory brackets, I got ICT billet accessory brackets that uh, allow you to retain. They it rearranges the accessories and allows you to retain, uh, retain, not retain, retain the uh, truck accessories. So I use that as three uh, hundred and thirty dollars. So we're up to four thousand four hundred and forty dollars so far. Um, radiator, uh, I purchased a. Mishimoto radiator and a Durali fan setup. I got that secondhand from uh, Patrick Fitzmorris. Shout out to PT Garage. Um, good buddies. That was $400. So $48.40 currently. The LS1 intake manifold that's on the car, that was a gift from Galen. Um, we had that sitting around. That was a $0 item, but usually costs in the realm of what, like 200 bucks? Um, so I didn't pay for that, and um, Evan gave me the GTO oil pan that we used, um, and you would have to pay for like a sicky swap one or whatever if you didn't want to do that. I purchased an ARP crank bolt. That was $35, um, because the factory one cannot be reused as it is torque to yield. So that sucks, and you have to do that. Uh, I purchased no! I accidentally cleared my phone. Um, I also bought a PSI wiring harness with EV1 fuel injectors. That was $550. Uh, at the time of purchase, I think they actually uh, recently upped it, uh, another 25 bucks. So I'll just add that 25 bucks. I don't know, oh, I bought, um, for an additional $30, um, I'm sorry, for an additional $12, I bought a knock sensor harness because it doesn't come with that. I reused the truck ignition coils and coil truck, the, the coil packs and the coil pack harness 
so you didn't have to buy that. Um, oh, a camshaft. I purchased a camshaft from Pat Fitzmorris, PNT Garage. Um, it was the one out of his LS2. Um, so it's an LS2 camshaft. I spent $160 on that. Uh, in order to run the LS2 camshaft, you need to run uh, better valve springs because truck valve springs hit valve float with truck cams. It's bananas. Yeah, um, like, fa like factory lift, yeah. This was uh, that $80 thing. Uh, the LS6 Blues that I put in it were 80 bucks. Um, so we're at 5702. $5,702. In order to run the LS2 cam, I had to purchase a Gen 4 front cover. That was $35. Uh, and a cam angle sensor was $20. Uh, I had to buy a, an ex, a, a Presto Extendo harness um, to get because the 5.3 is a Gen 3 LS and it has the cam sensor in the back, the LS2, which requires a Gen 4 style cam sensor, uh, is in the front, so you have to buy an ex extendo harness in order to make it work. And that was $20. So if you wanted to, uh, we obviously, I'm not retaining the factory harness because there's no reason to. Um, that's why I bought the PSI engine harness. It's because we're going to run an independent engine harness and an independent chassis harness. Uh, I'm going to have sick race car switches uh, on the dash because this is never going to be a street car again. Um, but if you wanted to, like I spent $575 on the PSI harness, if you wanted to get like a wiring specialties one, which would be a swap harness, which connects to the chassis harness to retain factory ignition and shit like that, that's 750 bucks or $800. And then it goes up from there if you're adding special bits. Um, but essentially to get the engine into the car, we like Evan made the motor mounts and stuff, so that was again zero dollars. Um, we're he's literally making the transmission bracket right now, so that was zero dollars. And it had a 350Z style bushing on it, which we just used because it was zero dollars. Um, so you'd have to you'd have to add that. So uh, what I paid. And this is with a reasonable estimate within a couple of bucks was five thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven dollars to put a five-three with an LS2 cam into my car. If you needed to buy like an oil pan and a swap kit, it would add another couple of thousand. Um, but uh, a reasonable estimate to get an LS into your car, if you had to purchase all of the parts yourself, you couldn't make any of it, would cost between $7,500 and $10,000. That is a reasonable estimate to put a, a 5.3 into an S chassis. This was like our attempt at a, a low buck thing, so we made you know some of the stuff ourselves. Um, we happened to come into uh, an LS1 with like an oil pan that we could borrow off it. Um, oh, uh, hold on, I am a fucking liar. Uh, I paid $40 for flywheel bolts, so $5,817. Um, so there was that, and then for the clutch bolts, we robbed them off the LS1. Um, so you'd have to pay another 40 bucks for that too. So. <laughs> Um, but that's that. The Collins swap kit that we I paid twenty eight hundred bucks for came with a flywheel, the bell housing, and the drive shaft, uh, which is important as well. So that is pretty much everything that I spent to get the, you know, the motor in the car. For the I bought an Easy Wiring harness from Easy Wiring Harnesses. Not sure exactly the name of the company. That was $200, um, and that's gonna be like the race car spec. This car has nine wires in it now, type thing. Um, and that is all that you need to, uh, in my 
estimation that's a, a reasonable um, estimation of everything that you need to get the car into, or get the motor into the car. I believe that that is about it. I can't think of anything that I may have missed. Um, I am going to have to buy a serpentine belt for another 20 bucks or whatever. <laughs> oh, uh, I also purchased um, every single sensor for this vehicle. Um, I, this, I was like, we're going to go all brand new sensors, uh, just like we did on the FC uh, LM7 swap. Uh, because we're like not messing around with any of that nonsense of, oh, maybe it's this, maybe it's this. I just want it to work when I push the start button. Uh, that's like the most important thing for me on this is that it just works. So we bought all of the sensors for this car on Amazon and it was a whopping $200. So $6,017 is what was spent. Um, and that I think is everything. Plus a couple of zip ties. I don't know if you want to count that. But that's the super honest build breakdown uh, of how much it costs. And anyone who tells you otherwise, their sponsors paid for it. Um, you have to be like, fucking, I don't know, who... I was gonna say who's like known for their leg strength and the first thing that came to mind was Oscar Pistorius. He doesn't have legs. So. <laughs>